Hey everybody, welcome to the BR Coalition Podcast. This is episode 18. My name is Jordan Berry and I'm here with my dad, Doug Berry. Today we're talking all about taking it easy, relaxing, being lazy. <laughs> well, kind of. Kind of, no. But not, not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> a little something in there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of good stuff to get into. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the prayer though. Okay, you you name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, conqueror of hell. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, Son and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, before we get started, I do want to mention that we are offering a free Ultimate Preparedness Guide download. This is a printable or just downloadable PDF that you can download for yourself and your family. Great first steps to getting better prepared physically and spiritually. So you can check that out in the link in the description or in the summary of this podcast. All right, so let's get right into it here. Uh, routines. Routines are considered to be a really good thing. And, you know, generally speaking, routines are very good. They help us uh, with accountability, tracking things, pr making progress in our lives, you know, achieving our goals, etc. cetera. Um, but today we're going to talk more about what happens when someone doesn't do their normal routine. And if that if we can become almost a slave, dare I say, to our routines, you know, where if we don't get what we're used to, whether that be our evening meal or our bedtime routine, we don't get the sleep we should should get or, you know, everything's around a whack, basically. Yeah. So our rituals. Yeah. That we kind of fall into sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. They can be good. They can be really good. You know, you have a workout routine, exercise routine, um, you know, school, homeschool routine, work routine, get up, we do this, 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 and things get moving. People have this, this issue in their prayer life, though, sometimes where their prayer life has to be a certain way. And if something disrupts the prayer life, their peace is thrown off and everything goes out the window and they can become a real bear to be around. It's kind of like that attitude where coffee first and then everything else. And if I don't get my coffee, then the rest of my day is just kind of shot. And we really... We really should not become a slave to that way of thinking or that way of living, but it does happen. So let's talk a little bit about uh, maybe give us some examples of what a good routine would look like um, as far as like prayer goes, but then also like maybe a daily routine as far as like exercise, things like that. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, and everybody will, will tailor this to themselves. You wake up in the morning and when that alarm goes off, try to get up right away. You know, as a friend of ours, mutual friend Dan would say, um, and he was quoting uh, some spiritual director, some spiritual leader somewhere, that if you hit snooze, you've already given in to some form of laziness. So wake up in the morning, get up, get your bed made, do what you got to do to get your, yourself groomed and ready to go. You get, you know, if you got kids, you got to get the kids routine going, get them fed, get them dressed, get them ready for the day. If it's getting ready to go off to work, same thing, you get your food, whatever you're going to do in the morning, get yourself ready to head out the door. In the middle of all this, or at the beginning of all this, actually at the very beginning of all this should be some prayer. Get some prayer in there right away. And some people will take five minutes, and some people, you know, they've got to sit down and spend 30 minutes. You know, a friend of ours we both know gets up and uh, he grabs his coffee, he gets in his chair in front of the fireplace, and depending on the season, sometimes that fireplace is going, sometimes it isn't, and he'll spend a half hour easily praying his rosary, getting that prayer time in. But if he doesn't get that, he's okay. Mm -hmm. And that, I know, is what we're going to get into a little more here now. Exercise routine, same thing. Get yourself set where you've got you know several days a week, however you're going to do it, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or Monday through Saturday, which is more my routine, of at least five or 10 minutes at a certain time. No, I'm sorry, what am I thinking? Five. It's a minimum of 10 to 15, minimum if I don't have much time for something. But normally it's 30 to 60 minutes, you know, I'm going to try to get done, you know, five, six days a week. And I have to do it at a certain time based on my, you know, schedule throughout the day and work and so forth. So getting these pieces together, and then, of course, everybody has to tailor that, as I said, to their own life. That that helps you function well when you know you have some sort of consistency in the schedule. But there has to be flexibility. Mm -hmm. And I know that's what we wanted to talk about. Right. I think anybody with you know kids, obviously all your children have moved out now, but still there's a certain other people's schedules do you know, intertwine with your own schedule. 
So just looking at that, you, you can plan the whole day, the whole week, the whole month, the whole year. And if you don't plan for errors or change or just be able to adapt, then every one of your days is just going to be bad. Mm -hmm. And you're going to look at everything as a failure. So planning that adaptability and giving your time, giving yourself time. Like if you, if you plan every second of your day uh, or every hour of your day and you're not planning any buffer window in mm -hmm. between that, you're just setting yourself up for failure especially if you have young children in the house. I mean, just speaking from experience. <laughs> or animals. Or animals. Like cows that get out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a day. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. We got it done. Yeah. Um, but you're right about that. And that's something I think it's really important to remember is having a set schedule is good. It's like, it's like very much like people who have a Fitbit now. That's a big thing for some people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm more old school. I never grew up using that sort of thing. But it's an accountability thing. And it works for a lot of people. Having that Fitbit thing on your wrist, I guess, is how it works. And it, you keep track of your steps. And I know people who will compete, you know, how many steps or whatever other exertion they put in to, uh, to be able to, uh, you know, accomplish some goal. And that's great. But I also have seen people get frustrated if they don't get their steps in and it throws them off now. Mm -hmm. Having a set schedule can be very helpful and is definitely an encouraged thing. But you're right. If we do not factor in, we live in a world, there are other people, you're going to have moments now and then where you're going to be thrown off that schedule. And we've got to take a deep breath and not let that get to us because it is easy to get so caught up in your ritual. We talked about this where, you know, you go to bed at night and before you go to bed, there's certain things you just have to do to help you calm down. This is what we've told ourselves. It's got to be the right kind of yogurt, the right kind of blueberries, you know, the right kind of ice cream, the right kind of, you know, for some people it's, I got to have two beers, you know, before I go to bed at night, you know, I got to have those couple of beers sitting around in the evening for an hour and a half with my feet up watching TV. It's not going to help you not hit that snooze button the next morning. Just, no. <laughs> just throwing that in there. A little bit of advice there. Yeah. 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 Try the yogurt out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That would probably be a little better on you then. Yeah. Um, but they go, they'll get frustrated and they'll get upset and they'll become irritable if they don't have that ritual, you know, taken care of every night. And really, I think what, what God tries to help us understand is that you don't know what's around the corner. You haven't been promised your life even in five minutes, let alone the next day or the next year. We have no idea what's right around the corner. Be ready to shift gears. Be ready to you know, jump to the other foot, be ready to be in that posture that says, Hey, it, you know, it's like a fight posture. We always talk about being, you know, in that forward posture, that forward position, the front balls of the feet, but you're still looking left and right. And you're ready for something that may come this way or that way. You've got to have that peripheral view and that peripheral attitude that says, Hey, I can, I can roll with whatever comes, you know, if someone's going to throw a punch this side. I can deal with it here and counter that way here. I can come under here but I've got to be able to roll with it and have the flexibility for it and not let it throw me completely off. There's too much at stake. If you just have this set idea, my schedule, my ritual, my way, and that's it. People get in the way. I'll start running them over like a steamroller. And that's, mm -hmm. that's just not a good thing. That, that's not going to help. I mean, we could compare it to, you know, back in the day when swords were the primary weapon used in war, you know, you had the soft steel mm -hmm. or the soft metal that would, you know, uh, be flexible. So it wouldn't break under stress as easily, right. but it wouldn't hold an edge. So it would, it would dull very quickly. And then you had the stronger or sorry, the, the harder steel, which would hold an edge, but it was very brittle when it got hit. So I remember you talked mm. about this in yeah. Virtus all the time yeah. about how they, so the Japanese in particular figured out that if you put the soft metal and the hard metal together, and then you heated it up and folded it and folded it and folded it over and over and over mm -hmm. again until you had this fine blend of two different kinds of metal. It was the perfect balance between strong, um, or sorry, it's perfect balance. It was strong altogether, but it was flexible and could also hold an edge right. at the same time. Right. And I think if we focus a little bit more on being flexible, still strong and having those systems and routines that we can constantly resort back to, because like we said earlier, those are very important and we need to have those in our day. There has to be structure in the day with prayer, sacraments, you know, family life. Um, you know, your your routine and your calendar has to reflect your goals so, or your priorities. So if your family and your faith is, are your priorities, 
how you schedule your day should reflect that. All right. So having those routines and those systems in place, be very clear about what those are. Are is it is paramount. But if that doesn't go according to plan, those priorities can't just be thrown out the window because, you know, almost looking at it selfishly, I didn't get my calendar done or I didn't get my checklist done. So I'm going to let everybody know I'm upset or, you know, I didn't get my my yogurt in the evening before right. <laughs> <laughs> or watching that that documentary movie that I was wanting to watch. Right. I right. can't it can't ruin everybody else's day just because well, something bugged you. And that that's a it's a great point son you get to the end of the day and some people will look back through the day and they're thinking of that checklist in their head or maybe they've actually written it out and they're looking at their accomplishments or what they wanted to get done i didn't get this i didn't get that oh, i'm so upset and they're upset because they didn't fulfill these things and you know if we get this out of whack out of priority when you talk about you know what is most important to you is reflected in your prioritization prioritization of your day. That's a very important thing to think about. Have I spent time with people? Have I been a good person around those people? Could they count on me in general? And I don't think my kids, and you could tell me, because you obviously my oldest son, growing up, were ever concerned about, I hope dad gets everything done that he wants to do today. <laughs> It was probably more, you know... We hey, were hoping you didn't have things on your to-do list. Yeah. I so, mean, that's a kid's mindset. Yeah, because yeah. you want to hang out with the parents. You want to do something fun. You want to, you know, throw the ball, whatever. You know, you you definitely don't want to see your parents, you know, constantly consume by accomplishing the list, mm -hmm. their own personal agenda. You know, make the agenda people first and let these other pieces kind of fall in and, and out where they need to be. But I think another thing to consider, too... When we sit down at the end of the day and we look through the checklist, so to speak, whether it's in the mind or on paper, and we're deciding whether or not we've accomplished enough, we decide whether or not it was a valuable day, a good day, based on that. And we don't see the value in the day sometimes in the interaction with people or the interaction with God or, heaven forbid, especially those of us who are kind of entrepreneur-minded like we both are and and you grew up around that, it's easy to, to tell yourself, I've got to be busy with things all the time. I've, I've got to take care of this, that, and the other thing. And God is notorious for saying, stop, just relax. <laughs> Spend <laughs> That's a the title of the podcast here. That's hey, what we mean by relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spend some time with me, God says to us regularly, and spend time with me in other people. Find Christ in others especially those that have been entrusted to your care, those that are placed in your life around you at all times. If we are so busy in our schedule and our ritual and our check the box here and our Fitbit steps and all this, and again, that has their, it has their place. Those things have their place. If they become so dominating in our lives that somebody comes over or makes or calls you, you get, you get a phone call and it's someone, a person, and you can't stop what you're doing for them, then you need to rethink this, all right? That old joke from uh, I was just thinking Brian that. Reagan. Yeah. yeah, you're booking yourself too tight. <laughs> yeah, if you if you got to get out of the house in three minutes, and that includes cooking a pop tart in the microwave, and you you got to zap for that pop tart, get out in three minutes. You're booking yourself a little too tight. But if you don't have time for people, if you don't have time, especially for those that God put in your life, specifically family, friends, or the the chance that you you meet somebody somewhere, bump into someone in a parking lot, you take a minute to talk to uh, the cashier at the grocery store. I'll never forget the time I was leaving a grocery store. And I said to the cashier, um, you know, how you doing? Good. How, how's your day going? Good. And uh, somewhere in this, she started to tell me about her two sons. And one was in the military and she was concerned for him. And she just opened up and started to talk. Now, very easy for us to say, well, I'm on a schedule. I got to go. I got time for this. But I thought I can't do that. So we talked for just a couple of minutes. There was nobody behind, in, you know, me in the line. So I was able to talk to her for just a couple of minutes. And by the end of it, I said, hey, you know, what, 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 I always ask for the first name of people because I'm not going to remember the full name. Give me the first name, you know, of both your sons. And I will, I will say a prayer for them. And her face lit up. She couldn't believe it. She, well, of course, you bet. And that's the sort of thing that I had to learn myself, that I had to stop. And not worry about, oh, my schedule, my schedule, my schedule. I had to make time for that odd moment when something might come up out of the blue and throw me off. And we have to learn to adapt to these things. Mm -hmm. Adapt 
and be flexible in these areas. So final point of the podcast here uh, that we wanted to talk about was intentionally switching up your mm. routine, your system at certain times throughout the week or throughout the month. Um, use it as a training exercise yeah. to throw yourself off. Yeah, do, do you remember on that? Forgive me. Do you remember on that point? As you were growing up, I would say things to you, like you and, and your and your siblings, that everything is an opportunity to train. Yes, that yeah. everything can be used as an opportunity to train. Meaning that training is the idea of finding a a a better way, not the friction, but the flow, as you've talked about earlier, which is a, is a great point. Friction. And, uh, you're trying to avoid. You're trying to find the flow of things. And if you train better, you find better flow. There's always a solution. Yeah, there is. Yeah. God grants stuff in ways that we can't even imagine. And he talks to us. We have to recognize that God can allow many things to come into our lives to allow us to use them in ways to train ourselves to find that flow, to find that better way to live, that better way to be closer to him and closer to each other. So on that point, um, and I do want to let you get back to what you were going to say here, but uh, everything is an opportunity to allow ourselves to improve in some even small way and, uh, and and find you know some fruit that comes from those moments. I think sometimes we get so locked into certain routines in life, work, school, you know, maybe even sports with, with your kids or yourself, um, that you can miss out on different opportunities, mm. meeting other people, helping other people. So something we encourage people to do maybe this week is uh, take a day or part of a day and switch it up. Mm. Call a friend, take your spouse out on a date, you know, go fishing with your kids. I don't know. Yeah. Find something just to change it up and uh, maybe create some new opportunities for yourself. But, you know, there, there's so many things that we can do on that point, son, that, that help us be ready to adapt, be ready to be flexible. I remember, you know, a great bit of advice, which I've tried to do uh, many times, is brush your teeth with the other hand. Like if you're used to, if you're right-handed and you brush your teeth with your right hand, once in a while do it with your left. Train your brain to do things differently in ways that are going to help it improve. Same concept here is change up schedule so that you can be more flexible and adaptable when your schedule gets changed outside yeah, of your control. Exactly. And yeah. that happens. You know, oh, I was going to sit down and watch this movie tonight. Then I got a call. And this happened not too long ago. Your uh, one of your siblings, um, Cold. This was a while back, and uh, sick grandchild, and needed help. I had to run right over there, and that turned into close to thirty six hours away from home, practically. You know, to assist my child and grandchild, and very little sleep, and very little sleep, mm -hmm. and I had to be fine with it, and I was. But it is one of those moments where, oh man, I was going to be home watching that TV show, you know, having that protein drink and uh, or the bottle of beer, whatever you're going to do. And this is my thing. And all of a sudden, boom, I got to go help somebody. And of course, some are going to be saying, well, it's your kid and your grandkid. Of course, you're going to do that. Okay. What if it's not your kid and your grandkid and it's somebody else that isn't quite as close to you? But did you do it with a good attitude? Did yeah. you let everybody else you, you came in contact with know that they were loved or that, were you kind to them? Exactly. Were you truthful? Were you kind? There's that saying, it's not what you do. It's who you become while you do it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, yeah, of course you had to do that for your, had sure. to. And you well, know. there's no question about it. There's no way I would not have done it, you know, and when you've needed help in your family, you know, your wife and kids, you know, mom and I would jump right in there and do whatever we can. Absolutely. But, you know, you're right. It's, it's how we're doing these things. Uh, that's a big part of it. You know, uh, it's one thing to accomplish the task, but as you just said, it's, it's what you're becoming, who you're becoming, how you're handling it. You know, how you're conveying this this message you're sending to others about being okay with your schedule being, you know, kind of uh, disjointed now because something has happened. Mm -hmm. But I really recommend that people shift things up once in a while. You know, just say, brush your teeth with the other hand. And what that means in general is change things up a little bit so that you are able to to uh, be flexible and adaptable in your schedule because those things happen in life. We're living in such an extreme self-development age. It mm. seems every podcast, and even we talk about self-development on this podcast, yeah. so I'm not going to exclude us from the group, but uh, which makes sense. We all want to constantly improve ourselves, right. but 
we have ice baths, saunas, you know, pro or supplement companies. Yeah. Everybody yeah. <laughs> who knows how to do a push up seems like they're coming out with the next grade to supplement. Yeah. Workout routines. There's so many options for people because everybody is seems there seems to be a craze of just extreme self development right yep. now. I think we can kind of lose touch with why we're even doing it in the first place. Mm. And that's to be a better person, not for yourself. I mean, yes, we have to care and love ourselves enough sure. to improve, but who are we affecting in our circle around us and right. on a daily basis? I think we have to daily revisit that and ask ourselves, is everything in our routine, in our schedule, is it just for me or am I, yes, taking care of myself, but then looking up and helping everybody who's, uh, you know, yeah immediate get out of the my immediate reach get out of the navel gazing exactly and like you said look up and uh focus on the reality that god has put me in this world to be his hands and feet his voice in this world and of course like you said you've got to love yourself enough to take care of yourself because god tells us that that's important love your neighbor as yourself well you feed yourself you clothe yourself you take care of yourself we should mm -hmm. because we're a temple of the holy spirit you maintain the temple you take care of that and if you don't take care of it you don't care about yourself you make poor decisions and that affects other people. Oh, so exactly. it's just, it's a big circle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're all part of the same body, finger, toe, eyes, nose. They all do something different, but it's the same body as St. Paul says. So yeah, I, and I think you're absolutely right on that. Take that time every day to ask, am I really, is St. John Paul II said, am I being a gift to other people? Because he would talk a lot about the fact that we're called by God to make a gift of ourselves to others. Well, you make a better gift of yourself if you are working on yourself in those areas, spiritually, naturally, physically. That's we talk about BRC all the time. Get stronger, get healthier. Why? Not just for yourself, which is good and important, but because you make a gift of yourself to others. And I want to be a healthy, strong gift for others. And I know there are people out there who will say all the time, well, you shouldn't exercise and work out just for other people. No, it's not just for them. It is in part for them, but it's also in part for me. It's for both. I have to do it because God asked me to take care of the gift that he gave me. By the way, paragraph 2288 in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Health and life are precious gifts from God. We are responsible to take reasonably good care of them. Yeah. So, my wife and my kids deserve the strongest, most resilient, adaptable father yeah. and husband. And that's that's on me. They yeah. can't make me that. That's God gave me free will and choices over my environment, the decisions I make. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And if we live our lives with that kind of an attitude, then we we will benefit from that because we'll be taking steps to be stronger, healthier, more in shape, um, more prayerful, more patient, more peaceful, more adaptable under stressful situations. We will do it because we know it's healthier for me in my mind, but it's also healthier for the people around me. I mean, everybody knows somebody out there that you don't necessarily always want to be around in a stressful situation because they don't handle stress well. If things don't go their way, routine's oh. gone. Everything's negative. Yeah, oh, everything's yeah. bad. They're going to complain. They're going to flip out. It's going to be terrible. I cannot tolerate that. I just don't want you know. And you know, when Uncle Harry and Aunt Margaret come over to the house for the family gathering, if it's not just right, then they're going to hear. It. Nobody wants to be around people like that necessarily. So let's don't be those people. Let's don't be that Uncle Harry, that Aunt Margaret, who just <laughs> nothing against Harry and Margaret. If that's your name, don't get me wrong. But it, you really want to make sure that you're trying your best to be an example of Christ to them. And we do that when we work on these little details. So yes, brush your teeth with your other hand once in a while, which figuratively means, or you can do it literally too. Whatever that means to you. Yeah. <laughs> Change up your schedule enough that you it keeps you sharp. We're all about kind of staying, keep that edge, keep that sharp. Be ready. Be ready. <laughs> yeah. Get ready, stay ready, That's as right. it says on the shirt. Get ready, stay ready. This is a good way to help do that. All right, that's all we have for you today, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, that's it for episode 18. Hey, I also want to encourage everybody out there to subscribe to this channel, share this with others. Of course, every YouTube channel says that. Subscribe, share, like, but get this information out. There's someone out there right now you know who just needs to hear this message about, hey, relax, lighten up, everything's going to be fine, be adaptable, be flexible, kind of roll with the punches as they come. So God bless you and strengthen you in the struggles, the battles that we all go through. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next BRC podcast.